Welcome to this tutorial on bulk loading records into InfoPlus. If you need to get multiple records into InfoPlus, put the data into an Excel or CSV file and then upload the file into InfoPlus. You can bulk load orders, items, customers, ASNs, and more. In this tutorial, we'll bulk load orders as the example, but all bulk loads work the same. You'll just be working with different data and fields. Your bulk load source file contains the data you want to upload into InfoPlus. Here is the source file that I'll use to demonstrate bulk loading orders. You can download this sample source file yourself. It's on the knowledge base in the bulk load orders support article. This file contains the information I want to load into InfoPlus. You'll notice some blank columns. If you want to enter the same data into a column for all records, you can leave the column blank here and then select a value for the field in InfoPlus. For example, every one of my orders is for the same line of business, so I've left the LOB column blank here. You don't even have to include the column in your source file, but it's okay if it's in there even if it contains no data. In this example, we've left line of business, warehouse, media code, and legacy restriction type blank. We'll select default values for these in InfoPlus. Again, the required fields will differ based on the type of data you are loading. We're looking at order information. Here's another tip about your source file. In some fields, InfoPlus looks for IDs that you may not be familiar with and that may not be visible in InfoPlus. For example, if you need to upload records for different warehouses, but you're not sure what InfoPlus is looking for in the field, simply use a consistent value to represent each warehouse. So for example, if you have two warehouses, perhaps one warehouse you list with a one, and the other you list with a two. During the bulk upload, you'll be able to tell InfoPlus which warehouse this one represents and which warehouse the two references and so on. So you can use your own values and then select which InfoPlus value it represents. Tips like this are also available in the Knowledge Base article about creating a bulk load source file. Okay, let's go ahead and perform the bulk load in InfoPlus. So first access the table where you want to load data. In this example, I'll access the order table and I'll do this by pressing a dot on the keyboard. Notice that we currently have 20 orders in InfoPlus. From here to do a bulk load, go to the Actions menu and select bulk load. The steps in the process display across the top. We're looking at the options step. This first step may be different based on the type of data you're uploading. When uploading orders, we need to specify if we're uploading a wide format or a tall format. Other tables might ask for other basic information. So let's talk about the difference between wide and tall format. Tall format means multiple rows can make up one order. So I'll go back to my source file and that's the format of our source file. These first two rows make up one order for Chris Collins. He's ordering five of this SKU and five of this SKU. For InfoPlus to know which rows go together, they have to be next to each other, and they have to contain all of the same information in the non-SKU related fields. As soon as it hits some other information in a row, it will consider that a new order. Again, this type of source file is referred to as tall format. Here's an example of wide format. One row represents a complete order, so you have multiple SKUs listed in one row. And that's clearly explained when you look at the descriptions here in the, in the options step in the bulk load. So again, our example is tall format, so I'll select that option and click Next. Now I need to actually pick the source file. You can drag and drop it here or click this link and find the source file that way. Here's my source file, so I'll click open. We can see that the source file is loaded here. Before I move on, notice these links here. This will give you a list of all of the required fields for this particular type of bulk load. And here you can download a template file that has all of the required column headers that you can use as a starting point. Okay, I'll click Next from this step. Now we're at the Fields step. There are two sections on this screen. There's the Required Fields section and the Optional Fields section. The first column lists the InfoPlus field, and the second column tells InfoPlus where to get the value for the field, either from a column in your source file or from a default value that you select. 
If your source file doesn't contain a required column or the column is blank, the default value radio button will be selected and the field will be red indicating that you must make a selection. Note that if you had a profile saved which saves all of these field assignments, you can select it up here. We don't currently have a profile saved. I'll show you how to save a profile in an upcoming screen. Okay, let's work through these fields. We did not indicate a line of business in our source file because we want every record to have the same line of business and it's easier to just select the value here. Likewise, our source file did not contain a warehouse. Again, this is a required field, so we have to select a value. Order date is next. If you name a column in your source file similar to the Info Plus field name and the column contains data, Info Plus will assume you want to pull the data from your source file into the field. That's the case here with order date. Note that if Info Plus had selected the wrong column from the source file, you can click this drop down menu and select a different column. You can also override your source file data with a default value if needed. For example, if you wanted to default to today's date for all orders, you could select that as a default value. We'll go ahead and pull the order date from our source file. We'll have to reselect it since I clicked away. Moving on, we'll let Info Plus pull the customer number from our source file. And notice the preview values link that will appear next to fields where you have selected to pull values from your source file. This will show you the first few values in that column in your source file. For media code and legacy restriction type, our source file was blank, so I'll select default values. Media code indicates how the order was taken, for example by phone or in writing. This information can be used for billing or reporting purposes. If you don't use this information, it's still a required field, but you can just select one of the values here to put into the order record. And legacy restriction type indicates any restrictions on how much or how often someone can receive inventory. If there are no restrictions, you can just select interim. For SKU information, we do want InfoPlus to pull the data from the SKU field, as well as we want it to pull in the quantity information from our source file, so I'll leave these selections as they are. Let's look at the optional fields. Other information that was discovered in our source file but is not required will be listed under optional fields. We have included the carrier information in our source file and we do want to pull that information into InfoPlus for our orders. But let's review the carrier values in our source file. Again, you can do that through this preview values link or you could go back to your source file and take a look. You can see we have different carriers for our orders and we have listed the same carrier in different ways. UPS ground is sometimes represented by UPSG and sometimes it shows UPS ground. When you don't know exactly what values InfoPlus is expecting, or when you have multiple values that represent the same value, like we have for UPS Ground, check the Map Values checkbox. With this checked, after I click Next, another screen will appear for me to tell InfoPlus how to match each one of my carrier values to an InfoPlus value. I'll leave all of the shipping information mapped to the columns in my source file. If you want to add fields to your upload, click the Add Optional Field button, and then you'll get a list of all possible fields for the type of data you're loading. When you select a field and click Add, you'll need to select a default value since the data doesn't exist in your source file. I don't actually want to include this field, so I'll click the X next to it. By the way, you can do this with any of the optional fields. You can remove them by clicking the X. So take one more look at your mapping, and when you're ready, click Next. If that Next button hadn't been available, it simply means you haven't filled in some required information on that screen. Since I clicked Map Values in the Carrier field, the Values step appears. If I had not checked that checkbox for any of the fields on the previous screen, this step would have been skipped. So here's the values that InfoPlus identified in the carrier column in the source file. Which InfoPlus value should be used for each of these? That's what we need to select here. I'll select InfoPlus's value for UPS Ground and FedEx. So now InfoPlus knows what to do with these values once they're uploaded into InfoPlus. Click Next. 
we are now at the review screen and we can see that the results are good. Every one of the orders in the source file was successfully read by InfoPlus so they can be uploaded. Up here is where you can save your mapping as a bulk load profile. So I'll click on that link and I'll just call this bulk load orders. This saves all of those field and value assignments that I just made. I'll show you later how you can select that profile again. Also notice this actions button. If necessary, you can export these review results to Excel. So my next step further down the screen is to submit this upload. Notice that there is a back button here. So if you did get any warnings or errors and you wanted to go back to the previous screens, you could do so from here. I'll click submit. Now we're at the confirm screen and it says that each of these orders has been inserted into InfoPlus. Notice that since I used the tall format, I'm seeing some orders combined into one. This is those first two rows we saw in our source file. I'll return back to the order table. When we started, we had 20 records. We now have 37. So these additional orders were the ones that came from the bulk load. Okay, I'm going to go back into the bulk load process to show you a few additional tips. I'll start off the same way we did before, selecting our file. Now I'm at that field step. Remember, this is where we filled in all of the mapping last time. So since I saved a profile, I can select it right here. And when I do so, all of my selections are filled in. Even the checkbox for map values. And when I click Next, the values are also filled in. I could make any changes if I needed to to this bulk load. And when you get to the review screen, that's where you have the option to save over top of the changes in your profile, or you can click to save a new user bulk load profile with the changes that you made. Be aware that you can also share bulk load profiles. So let me quickly show you how to do that. You want to get to building blocks, and that's through the menu icon in the upper left, and then go into the user bulk load profile table. Here's that profile I created. You could simply share it with somebody else. And now they would then have this profile available when they're doing a bulk load of orders. Lastly, I just want to share an example where you get an error when trying to bulk load. Here's a screenshot of the error. You can see that errors appear as a red X in the results section. In this case, the SKU in the source file wasn't recognized. When an error occurs anywhere in your source file, you will not be able to continue with the bulk load. You'd have to fix the source file and then start the bulk load over again. And that completes this tutorial on bulk loading records. Again, we use the example of bulk loading orders, but all bulk loads work in the same basic way. For any differences and for a list of required fields for the different types of bulk loads, see the related bulk load articles in KnowledgeBase. Thank you for your attention in this video.